Could this assistant coach be the Super Bowl difference maker in 2024? You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're back, everybody. Matt Derry with you. It is Locked On Lions on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day on a Wednesday, May 29th, and a Thursday, May 30th. Thank you for making us your first listen and checking us out wherever you get your podcast. Thank you for watching on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel. We appreciate all of you subscribing and watching us for free. Back and up and running after a, a very, very bad day yesterday. I was sick under the weather ear infection, among other things, and uh, back and feeling better today. And back with a new episode of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. We got to talk about the Lions' newest assistant coach that is getting so much love that maybe just maybe this is the guy that could be the biggest difference maker and biggest pickup this offseason. We'll get into that coming up momentarily. We told you about PFF's quarterback rankings and how Jared Goff rated 16th out of 32, and many of you, including on my Twitter feed at Dairy Speaks, are very upset with Trevor Sikama from PFF. Well, Sam Monson did the wide receiver rankings at PFF. We'll run through those and tell you where Amon Ross St. Brown comes up. Uh, also, some issues for a former Detroit Lion off the field. Now we might know why this guy is no longer on the team. And an update on the legendary backup quarterback for the Lions. Many of you love Hendon Hooker. All of that today right here on Lockdown Lions. Brought to you today by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. Got to give a shout out to my main man, Ron Studley, who runs the reading program at Ashley Elementary School out in New Baltimore today. I was out there for... Uh, uh, their contest that they do uh, battle of the books every year. I was reading to the kids and doing trivia questions and we got to uh, say hi to Ron and Andrea, uh, the Studleys and everybody out at uh, Ashley elementary. Thank you for having me out today. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Had a lot of fun do it every year. And it is uh, really, really awesome. So Taiwan Jones there as well. The former Michigan state linebacker who played in the NFL too, was an anchor Bay um, graduate and alum. All right, follow us on Twitter at Dairy Speaks, at Locked On Lions, Matt Dairy Facebook fan page. Thank you to our everydayers that are out there. Many of you reached out yesterday when we put the tweet out that we we're going to have a show. I couldn't talk yesterday. Uh, appreciate all of you uh, checking checking in on me and uh, seeing that I am uh, doing all right. That was mixed in on the Twitter along with all the Trevor Sikama hate, which is understandable. All right, so the Lions made a move this offseason, which was interesting. Uh, firing their D-line coach and bringing in Terrell Williams hmm, from the Tennessee Titans, like right away. Like it was almost announced. There were reports out there that the Tennessee Titans D-line coach, Terrell Williams, was coming to Detroit long before the Lions made a move, uh, you know, with their D-line coach to get rid of him. And um, now... There's been so much talk about improvement and there's been so much talk about going out and finding a guy that's going to get the most out of Levi Owens, Enrique, going to get the most out of Broderick Martin, uh, DJ reader, Aleem McNeil, and those big boys in the middle. Terrell Williams in it, by all accounts has been the story of the coaching staff thus far in OTAs and just articles upon articles uh, nationally, locally, about the Lions might have themselves the best defensive line coach in all of the NFL. Remember, Terrell Williams worked in Tennessee and developed guys like Harold Landry, Jeffrey Simmons, uh, Danico Autry, uh, Jarrell Casey, who were all really, really stout, good guys up front. You know, Landry more of an edge guy, but the other three uh, along the interior of that defensive line. And, you know, Dan Campbell was talking the other day about Broderick Martin and the amount of weight that he's lost and how last year really didn't play all that much for a guy that was drafted in the third round. And Campbell was talking about the opportunity for Martin to play and be coached by and under Terrell Williams. He said, quote, I can tell you this Terrell, who I've got confident, a lot of confidence in Terrell Williams is our D line coach. I think he really is the best D line coach in the league. And if he's not, you can argue what place he is. 
Broderick's been working with him, a ton of one-on-one individuals. Look, the kid wants it. He's working and he's improving. So the Lions, you know, drafted Makai Wingo. They're bringing back Josh Paschal. They've got John Kaminsky. We know all about Aiden Hutchinson and what he does. But it's almost like the Lions looked up and said, look, for all that we've done along the defensive line, and the fact that they've got some good players, and of course they brought in Marcus Davenport, but they have some good players. right? DJ Reader is really good. Aiden Hutchinson is excellent. Aline McNeil is very good. But I think the Lions looked up and said, we have a chance now that Mike Vrabel is out in Tennessee to go out and get the guy, right? When Mike Vrabel missed some time in the preseason, what was it, last year or the year before? Who was the acting head coach? Terrell Williams. We have an opportunity to go out and get a guy that is arguably the best defensive line coach in the game. We just replaced our D-line coach with Todd Wash a year ago. Screw it. doesn't matter. What's going to make us better for 2024? Let's go out and get the best. And that's exactly what they did. And you got to respect that. And Terrell Williams didn't talk to other teams. Terrell Williams didn't go, oh, let me see if I can stay in Tennessee. Oh, let me see if I can talk and wait for Harbaugh to get the Chargers up. No, he came to Detroit fast, quick. And he's, uh, you know, made a huge impact already. And you look at what ailed the Lions in the NFC Championship game last year. There were so many things that went wrong in that second half, right? And I don't want to rehash it. But if you got a guy that's going to come in as an assistant coach. And the Lions right now have a really good coaching staff, right? The players in the players poll last year voted Aaron Glenn, the best (coughs) um, uh, defensive coordinator in the league based on player vote, all right? You may argue Ben Johnson is the best offensive coordinator in the league. Hank Fraley is as good an offensive line coach as there is in the game. Seriously, Hank Fraley is freaking good. And now you're adding Terrell Williams and maybe just maybe Pascal, Kaminsky, Martin, Onzerike, if he makes the team, Reed or McNeil. What if that unit becomes dominant? Christian McCaffrey's not going to have all that room to run like he did in the second half of the NFC Championship game last year. Brock Purdy's not going to scramble and kill the Lions on some third downs because the Lions D line stay in their lanes, make some plays, push the O-line back, force bad throws, force turnovers. What if Terrell Williams is the difference maker? That's what's gotten this team from three wins to nine wins to 12. It's talent. Don't get me wrong. But the Lions have a really good staff. Antoine Randall L has, has interviewed for higher up jobs. Um, 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 Scotty Montgomery, the running backs coach, wants to be a head coach one day, is highly regarded. I, I'm not going to go through all of the assistants, but they've got a really good staff. And a lot of them played the game. So that helps with the players and the relatability. So keep an eye on this Terrell Williams story and watch the Lions defensive line. We get to September and the Lions are opening up uh, against the Rams and Bucks. And if we're seeing a difference, and look, DJ Reader is going to make a difference because he's just an upgrade from when the Lions had Quinton Bohanna playing next to Aleem McNeil last year. All right. Kaminsky's now all of a sudden back in another contract year. Aleem McNeil has got to be re signed. You know, he's going to be playing, <coughs> excuse me, for some dollars. But if you have the best defensive line coach in the league, that's going to aid in the progress of this team. And it's going to help the secondary and the corners might look better because the pass rush is going to be better. You stop the run on first and 10 and it's second and nine that helps the secondary as opposed to second and two. So I love what I'm hearing and reading about Terrell Williams and the amount of respect. Look, we talked about it when he got the job. Um, Amazing. The Lions last year were 23rd in sacks, 19th in PFF pass rush grade, and 26th in ESPN's pass rush win rate. 
not good enough. Got to be better. What if he works with James Houston and really makes him a, a big-time pass rusher? Terrell Williams, watch that name. This could be very, very exciting having him on this staff. The Lions went out and got him and made it a priority. All right, coming up next, uh, wide receiver rankings. I'm not as angry about this as I was about the Jared Goff quarterback rankings from PFF. We'll discuss next. We told you earlier, Locked on Lions brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Here we go, NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs heating up. I think tonight we got Edmonton and Dallas in the Western Conference Finals. Tiger double double header going on right now. Baseball, <clears throat> you want to put down some money on all this stuff. FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to be at bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Tomorrow night, if you don't care about Dallas and Minnesota in Game 5, do player props. Luka Doncic, over-under on points, made three-pointers by... Ant Edwards. No one calls him Anthony anymore. They call him Ant. You can do all of that at FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Wednesday edition of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen and checking us out. We're Wherever you get your podcast, voice, uh, I think, sounds a little bit better. A bit of a struggle at times on Mondays. We had Trevor Sikama on the show talking about the PFF quarterback ratings and why he had Jared Goff ranked dead in the middle at number 16. He explained a lot of it about big-time throws. I didn't agree with a lot of it, but it's a good discussion with Trevor. Go back and watch Monday's show in case you missed it. (coughs) Excuse me. Okay. Um. I hit the mute button, but I'm I'm too slow on the draw here. All right. PFF quarterback ratings, they go off at 16. What about the top 32 wide receivers going into the 2024 season? Our main man, Sam Monson from PFF.com, penned this piece last week on the website. Not a surprise when we look at the top receivers in the game. Justin Jefferson comes in at number one. No one's going to argue that. Tyreek Hill comes in at number two. I'm not going to argue that either. Jamar Chase of the Bengals at number three, followed by C.D. Lamb, who we saw firsthand last year, just torched the Lions of the Cowboys. A.J. Brown at five. Devontae Adams at six of the Raiders. And then the Lions, Amon Ross St. Brown coming in at number seven. Sam writes, quote, a mid-round steal for the Leos in 2021. Amon Ross St. Brown has improved each year of his NFL career and has now had back-to-back seasons with a 90-plus PFF grade. He has dropped just 3.1% of catchable targets in the NFL and may have the most reliable hands in the game. Rounding out the top 10, Brandon Ayuk of the Niners, Cooper Cup of the Rams, Debo Samuel of San Francisco. So Amon Ra comes in at number seven. What do you guys, what do you guys think of that? Um... What do I think of it? Because you're watching for my opinion. I'll say this. uh, I'm not putting Amon Ross St. Brown behind Devontae Adams. I'm putting him ahead of Devontae Adams. And I like Devontae Adams. But Devontae Adams is 31. Um, Last year with the Raiders, did catch over 100 passes. But I don't think had the kind of impact a year ago that Amon Ross St. Brown did. All right. Hard to argue against C.D. Lamb ahead of Amon Ross. A.J. Brown's a stud. All right, Chase, Tyreek, Justin Jefferson. But I, I think Amon Ra is a top six receiver in the league. Is there anybody behind St. Brown that I would take ahead of him? No. Puka Nakua made the Pro Bowl over him last year because his statistics were ridiculous, but that was a one-year thing. Now, Nakua might be really good in year two. I'm not going to say he won't be, but he was number 13 on this list. St. Brown has established himself, and now he's the highest-paid wide receiver until... Jefferson gets his new deal because we know it's coming. Uh, and I think Devontae Adams is, is in the last year of his deal with the Raiders. Not, not that I think he's going to get at 32 the kind of money that St. Brown got, but Amon Ra to me is a top six receiver. I don't have big beef with this list. 
Here's what I will also say about this list. Next year, when I'm sitting here in late May, going over these PFF lists, there better be another Detroit Lion on this list. And that's Jamison Williams. On the back end of this list, you got T. Higgins at 32, Chris Godwin at 31, George Pickens and his bad attitude at 30, Roma Dunze, who hasn't played a single game in the NFL, 29, Michael Pittman, 28, Chris Olave, 27, Drake London, 26, Malik Neighbors, 25, DK Metcalf at 24. By the way, did anybody see this video that's viral on the internet of DK Metcalf working out at a high school and a bunch of high school kids were just like, hazing him and saying stupid stuff to him and trying to like record it. What is wrong with society? What has happened to us? Where it's like cool to like diss an NFL player is working out at your high school and a bunch of guys, high school kids hover around like the fence area and start yelling stuff at him. Negative stuff. And he comes over and he was like, DK was great to these kids. And was just like, what's your issue? And the kids like backed away and were trying to talk big because they were being, rec- they were recording it for their TikToks and Instagrams. Like what is wrong with people? But again, since 2015, this has been what society has turned into. It's, 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 it's okay to be dicky to people. It's terrible. Uh, Jalen Waddle at 23, Keenan Allen, 22, Marvin Harrison, 21, Mike Evans, 20, Amari Cooper, blah, blah, blah. All right. The list goes on and on. Um, Nico Collins at 15, that kid has really come on for Houston, the former Wolverine. <clears throat> My point is Jamison Williams has got to be on this list next year. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It is time now in year three for J-Mo to become a top 30 wide receiver in this league, top 25 wide receiver. It's there. The talent is there. Can he make the adjustments? Can he find the football in the air on those deep routes? We know we can run with it. We know handing him the ball in a reverse is, is money in the bank. We know get it to, getting it to him in space is important. But next year when we do this list, I expect to be talking about Amon Ra in the top five and J-Mo at least in the top 30. All right, and there's a lot of good receivers in this league. But Jamison Williams, top 30 next year, I want him better than a Dunze and Godwin and T. Higgins, who even knows what team T. Higgins is going to be on next year, and Jalen Waddell, who's never healthy. I want to see Jamison Williams' name next year on this list. All right, you want to wonder why Isaiah Bugs was let go by the Detroit Lions last year. Remember, like, Isaiah Bugs was just benched and was nowhere to be found and you know, reportedly mouthed off to Dan Campbell, didn't like his playing time early, didn't like the rotations going on at training camp. Did you guys see this story today? Isaiah Bugs has been accused of animal cruelty in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. He's going to receive criminal charges for the case. Back in late March, Bugs left on his back porch, uh, left on a back porch of a home that he was renting. Two dogs left on a porch and left them there with no food and water for 10 days. He also left the house owing over $3,100 in back rent. City of Tuscaloosa's animal control officers found a gray and white pit bull on the screened in back porch of this house without access to food or water. They also found a black Rottweiler mix locked in a metal cage in direct sunlight without access to food or water. A neighbor told police that the dogs had been left on the back porch for at least 10 days. The pit bull had to be euthanized. The Rottweiler is being cared for right now. Two misdemeanor war, a war, uh, two misdemeanor warrants have been obtained for second-degree cruelty to dogs or cats. They're trying to um, find Bugs right now, apparently. Uh, Bugs is with the Chiefs, of course, and was on their practice squad last year. Um, Yeah, he's on a future reserve contract with uh, Kansas City right now. What a despicable act. That's horrible. And I'm no animal person or a dog or cat or whatever, but like a person, but 
My goodness. Here's a guy that makes <coughs> at least six figures. He owes money for back rent. He obviously skipped out. And he left these two dogs to one of them to die uh, in a house with no food or water for 10 days. Luckily, neighbors found, finally called animal control. What a jerk. Seriously. And it's funny. He had a really good first couple of years with the Lions. And it was a Brad Holmes find. And then he just kind of fell off the face of the earth. And you see why. I mean, to do something like that is just beyond cruel and horrible. And again, the Lions, they want good guys. They want good people in this organization. And they just kind of discarded Isaiah Bugs last year. Chiefs picked him up. He never played. He was on the practice squad. They never activated him. He never played a snap. So there's a reason for that. You know, um, man, he had nine and a half sacks at Alabama in 2018. I mean, this talk about a wasted talent. Really, really solid football player, but it's pretty obvious why these teams didn't put him on the field, including the Lions. And uh, that story is just brutal for Isaiah Bugs, who's going to be arrested soon for uh, what he did. All right, coming up next, a Hendon Hooker thought. We will do that right here on Locked On Lions. We will do that next once I queue up this. All right, folks, looking for tickets. NBA Finals are coming up soon. The Lions schedule is out. You're looking for tickets to anything. Game time makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Plus, prices on the Game Time app actually go down closer as it gets to tip off. We're going to have NBA Finals coming up. Could be Boston and Dallas, unless Minnesota does something miraculous. If you're in those cities and you're looking to go to one of the games, you can get them at Game Time. They got killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. Here's the thing. All right. I mean, we got the schedule right here. I've looked at it numerous times. Opening night, Sunday night, prime time, Rams, Lions, September 8th, 820 NBC. But you want to be there. You want to be there. Get your tickets on the Game Time app. They're available right there, right now. They got that views from your seat. So you can click on the section. You see, you turn right, you turn left, you scroll. You see exactly where you were sitting on Game Time. Take the, take the guess. We're out of buying tickets with Game Time and get NBA Finals tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. All right, a lot of articles coming out, and a lot been uh, has been discussed as OTAs are continuing on down in Allen Park about Hendon Hooker. And I know, I know. Now that Jared Goff has a brand spanking new four-year contract at $51 million a year or $53 million a year, excuse me, the second highest paid player uh, or highest paid player in Lions history, second highest paid quarterback in NFL history. Let's get down to business here. Hendon Hooker is going to get more snaps in practice and more of a look because the Lions might need him to be the backup quarterback if, knock on wood, something happens to Jared Goff. Now, again, last year at this time, Hendon Hooker was still coming back from a torn ACL. He hasn't played football since November of 2022 at the college level. And, you know, a lot is being made now of what's his role going to be? Will a veteran like a Nate Sudfeld or somebody else take his job? Are they going to, are the Lions going to be comfortable with really a rookie because he didn't play all of last year getting an opportunity to be the backup quarterback? Well, as of right now, you look at this roster and you only see these three QBs, I think the Lions do view Hendon Hooker as their backup. Uh, he's going to play a ton in those three preseason games in August against the Giants, the Steelers, and the Chiefs. So <coughs> the Lions know what they have. The Lions can see what he can do. But again, I want to 
put out a warning shot here in May. Just because he's getting more reps at OTAs, whether it's training camp coming up in late July, certainly the preseason, does not mean he's ever going to be a starter with the Lions. Here's, here's another thing. Remember when Scott Mitchell came in for Dan Marino, I believe it was Dan Marino, years ago in Miami, and got a chance to play, and then the Dolphins traded him. Remember when, you know, the, the Niners have the issue of Joe Montana and Steve Young. There are there are opportunities here for the Lions to maximize the value of Hendon Hooker. First of all, you want a reliable backup quarterback. Nate Sudfeld is not that. There's one thing we've noticed with Brad Holmes over the years, and last year was the exception because Teddy Bridgewater was extremely reliable. He just didn't have to play. Now Teddy Two Gloves is retired. Having Hendon Hooker as that as that insurance policy for Goff, if something happens to Jared, I'm excited to see what the kid can do. But if Goff plays in all 17 games like he did last year, and Hooker looks really, really good in August and maybe in the preseason, and there's teams going, we think he could be a starter, they're going to send you a package of picks for Hooker. And the Lions can maximize the value. But just because a guy looks good at OTAs or he's getting more reps or he feels good does not mean he's taking over for Jared Goff. <coughs> it's not happening. There are still people, I, I still talk to fans like, hey, what do we got to take a look at Hooker? Do we? Yeah, if Goff gets hurt, you want to have somebody that can come in and win you a football game or two or three. But I got news for you. I don't think the Detroit Lions are getting to the Super Bowl without Jared Goff. So keep all that in mind uh, as we watch. And I think he's going to be Mr. August. I think Hendon Hooker, when they play the Giants, when they play the Chiefs, when they play the Steelers in the preseason, that we're, it's going to be a lot of him. And he's going to uh, probably look good. But again, Skylar Thompson looked good last year in the preseason. Uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson lit it up in the preseason. The Browns made him the backup quarterback and he was a disaster. He wasn't ready. He was a rookie. They had to go out and find Joe Flacco. And um, who was the other one? The, 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 the Browns are trying anything because DTR wasn't the guy. Because he wasn't ready. And and Hooker might not be ready. So we'll have to see. All right. We are back again tomorrow with a fresh episode of Locked On Lions. Thanks for making us your first listen. Good to be back on Locked On Lions. nice if I hit the right button today. Man, off my game. Talk to you tomorrow.